Now, we've all got to learn to yield to the Spirit of God. Uh, when you hold out, you're not holding God up, you're holding your own growth up. Amen. God only says uh, things that are needful for us, and he says uh, uh, he gives us directions because he loves us. Amen. So sometimes the directions doesn't sit too well with us. We don't like to hear God because God speaks uh, pretty straightforward. He says it like it is. And he's the only one that can say it like it is because he created us, right? We belong to him. He does not belong to us. We are his. Uh, we're his property. Amen. So he's the only one that can say it like it is. So it's good that we stick with the Bible, my brothers and sisters. I, I don't try to give you any of my philosophy because my philosophy has gotten me in trouble a long time ago. And I, I don't believe in what I, I think. I believe in what God says. So whatever we teach in the, in, in the church is directly from the word of God. And if you, if you pay uh, attention to the word of God and look at your life, you can witness or attest to the fact that God's word is sure enough true. What it says is true. I don't care what the world does or, or what they uh, uh, think about it. It's going to happen the way God said it. Okay? All right. Now, uh, all of you should have these cards. Y'all see these cards? Yeah. All right. Take your card out a minute. Okay? Because if we're going to grow as a church, you didn't get one? Do we have any more? Oh, okay. Who didn't get a card? Raise your hand if you didn't get a card. This is something I want you to keep. Okay? This is something I want you to use to uh, teach to others. Pass one behind you. Who else needs one? Who else? Anybody on this side? Pass it down for me, please. Okay. Pass it down for me. All right. Here you go. Anybody else? Oh, take that out. Take that out. All right. Thank you. Anybody else? How many cars you need, Sister Belinda? All right. Now, this belongs to God. This organization does not belong to a man. Okay, let me tell you something that happened to me earlier today when I was getting ready for our uh, day Bible class. I was walking to the back and I said, let me go to my office and get a book. And the Lord said, who told you that was your office? Listen to what I'm telling you now. He said, that ain't your office. He said, that's the pastor's study. And don't you call it your office because somebody else is going to be sitting there. How many of you said my house? Come on, how many of you said? Where my car? Get out my car. The Lord said you don't own nothing. It all belongs to me. This and you all belong to the Lord. God tells us how to run his business. This is not my business. This ain't your business. The money in your pocket ain't yours. So we have this little formula that the Lord asks us to follow called the tithe. And he said, give the tithe and offering. I want every member to understand, look at this McDonald scenario. How much does that person bring home a week? Look at it again. 200 what? What do they bring home? Now, all of us in here know there's no way possible I could make a living off $217 a week. How many of y'all agree you need a little more than that now? Well, if, if I can't make it off 217 how come I give God less than what this person is supposed to tie? How does the church supposed to make it and I'm not even giving the church McDonald's tithe. 
But I got the nerve to say I need more than that. But the church, $10 is good for the church. Now, if we're going to ever grow and do the work that God called us to do, it's going to take us following God's directions. Directions. Now, this church is set up on a budget. So this is not a type of preacher that's looking for your money. Okay, I'm like Billy Graham. Billy Graham gets a salary. I don't care if they bring in $100 million. Billy Graham going to get the same paycheck that he always got. That's the same thing with me. So it, it has nothing to do with the preacher, as people try to make you think the preacher trying to get the money out your pocket. No, he's not. The preacher is trying to do God's bidding. And we have to reach the laws as a church. We're not here just to pat each other on the back and comfort each other every week. We have an assignment to do, and we need to do what God called us to do. So look at that. How much does the McDonald person tithe a week? $21.75. Now, I'm not putting down on the McDonald worker because the McDonald worker is doing what he's supposed to do. God is pleased with him. But the scripture asks, will a man rob God? And I know that quite a bit of people in here committing robbery every Sunday. And God ain't pleased with you. How do you know he ain't pleased? Because he says it in his word. You're under a what? You're under a curse. I didn't say it. He says it. He's not going to bless you. He's not going to bless you. Now, if we're supposed to bring in, look at the total on there, with a $5 offering, if you put in $2 in the offering still in 2017, something wrong with you. Ask your neighbor, is something wrong with you? If I gave you $2, you wouldn't consider it I gave you nothing. That's how you would feel. You'll feel, well, he just spared some change. Two dollars has changed to you. You see eight quarters laying on the dresser drawer, that don't mean nothing to you. Leave it there for months. Because that ain't no money. You don't even pick it up. You'll leave it sitting there for years, eight quarters. Because you know that ain't no money. Five dollars. How many of y'all know five dollars ain't no money no more? I, I ain't even asking you to give much. What is five dollars? Nothing. Especially with Mike work. You still working at the Superdome? You can't get a hot dog <laughs> at the Superdome with five dollars. And for those of you who drank beer, you know you ain't getting one now. Five dollars, two hundred and fifty people is how much money? Look at it. Fifteen thousand uh, dollars. Is that a Sunday? No that's, no, that's not a Sunday. That's for the whole what? That's for the whole year. So how much are we supposed to have at the end of the year? Just if all of us worked at McDonald's and, and uh, we all made minimum wage, how much money should the church bring in? Almost $300,000, right? So how much money should this church be bringing in? Come on, think about it now. Am I being ridiculous, Brother Baldwin? Or am I just asking you to do what God told you to do? Yes, ma'am. Uh-huh. No, no, that's an offering. See, don't, and we're going we're gonna to cover that. We're going to cover that in Bible class because I don't want y'all to confuse Old Testament with New Testament. Pardon me? Yeah, well, you need to understand the Old Testament. See, first of all, first fruits was a festival that we're going to cover. Okay, now, they asked Jesus that question. Uh, should we pay taxes? See, that's what you're talking about. And Jesus said, give me the coin. And, and he said, whose inscription is on the coin? 
And they say, Caesar's. He said, well, render unto Caesar's that which is Caesar's, but render unto God that which is God. So God ain't asking you for Caesar's money. All right? That ain't your money. And your job prove it to you, right? Because they don't give it to you. Uncle Sam, take his off the what? Top. So that ain't yours. That's just your duty for being a citizen in this country. So that ain't, the, that ain't your first fruit. That's theirs. They take theirs. All right? So your money I'm talking about. What's in your hand, what belong to you, you give from that. You follow what I'm saying? Not Uncle Sam's money now. Okay? You got to give Uncle Sam his. He's going to take his. Your money I'm talking about. All right? Y'all understand the difference? And that's a good question because a lot of people or a lot of preachers try to deceive the people and say, uh-uh. You give us off your gross. That ain't fair to the people. That ain't fair to the people because they ain't bringing that gross home. Okay, that ain't fair. You cheating the people now. Okay, I'm not trying to cheat you. I say give Uncle Sam his money. Now what's yours? Let's talk about that. Everybody understand what we teach at Pleasant Valley. All right, so $297,000 with McDonald workers uh, should we be somewhere in the area of $600,000, y'all think? Yes. How many of y'all make double or more than seven twenty-five? dollars How many of y'all make more than seven twenty-five? dollars Now, My wife is on permanent disability. So she gets a government check. Now watch the government now. The government gives her a check and they take taxes out. Ain't that crazy? Now wait a minute, the check come from you. They send her a check minus her taxes. And she has the tithe off of what they sent her. And we had never been broke. We're not hungry. A matter of fact, our problem is we eat, say it with me. Come on, all of us know it. We know the problem. We eat a snack between our snacks. How many of y'all do it with me now? Come on, I know I ain't the only one. You eat your snack, and you got your late snack coming, and you eat a snack between the snack to hold you to the other snack. <laughs> so in essence, we never stop what? Eating. That's how blessed we are. Raise your hand if you're rich. All the rich people in the church, raise your hand. Mm-mm-mm. Only a few of y'all. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Only a few of y'all rich. Ain't that something, Craig? Only a few of y'all rich. Well, let me show y'all something. Let me show you something. Let me show, put your hands down now. And I want, I want you to understand why the rest of the world call all of us crazy. Now, in the Bible, Paul wrote a letter to Timothy, and he told Timothy, Instruct the rich not to be arrogant. Tell your neighbor you're just too arrogant. Yes, now, let me help y'all now. Let me help you. He said, tell them uh, to share what they have with others, with the poor especially. And he said, tell them to remember that this life is not the real life. Now, y'all look it up. I wish I had the text with me so you could read it. It's in Timothy, first or second Timothy. Tell the rich, find it's easy to find. Share it. Now, I was studying that, Brother Paul, and I was saying, yeah, 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 Paul. And then the commentary had to help me understand what a rich person is when Paul was writing that. Now, watch this. 
A rich person in those days was anybody who had more than one pair of clothes. I'm going to ask y'all, are y'all rich? A rich person, the rich person had food for more than one day. That's who he was talking to. If you, had, if you knew what you was going to eat tomorrow, you were called rich. Now, how many of y'all got clothes you forgot you got? How many of y'all got shoes you, you, you don't even know where they're at? You got so many of them. I forgot I had these brown pair. These things still nice. I only wore them once. How many of you got clothes you say, I never wore this. You rich. You are filthy rich. You are just like the rest of the rich in this country. Selfish. Selfish. Want to keep everything you got. Don't want to give anybody anything. Especially God. Got an attitude. I wish I would put five dollars in off. Ain't lucky I'm giving the two. Yeah, Craig. That's right. Uh, that total, 250 members times $5 per Sunday is $65,000 a year, and that's everybody giving $5. Now, let me tell y'all something. I go to the gas station and get gas. Then I go in the store and get some more gas. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? I walk in the store. And I'm looking for this tank to get full, too. Right? And I guarantee you, I spend every time more than $5. Because my Diet Coke, the one I get, is $1.99. That's my drink to wash down my other stuff. The man always tell me, Seven something. And I pay it with a smile. But when it comes to the church, and we say, get five dollars in your offering. Five dollars. Now how many of y'all can get more than five dollars? Just be honest. How many of y'all can get more than five dollars? Now if you're sitting there saying, Oh Reb, I I just can't, you never will. Listen to me. God ain't going to never let you get there. You're going to always be a $2 giver because you don't trust him. Now watch this. Come on, k I'll put it up. All right, we were studying the year of Jubilee. Who can bring me up to date? Your year of Jubilee, what? What happens? Huh? All debts are forgiven. We was happy about that. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Right? Okay. The Lord said every how many years? Uh-uh. Year of Jubilee. How many years? 50 years. Seven times seven. Every seventh year. And you do that seven times, that equals 49 years, right? And he said on the 50th, Right? Now, he said, look at 19. It says, then the Lord will yield this fruit and you will eat your fill and live there safely. He said, you may ask. In other words, he told them, don't grow no food that year. Look at us now. I want you to see yourself. Don't grow no food that year. There's going to be enough. I'm going to what? Take care of you. I got it. 
I'm capable of taking care of you. I can take care of you. Now, during Katrina, I learned that God is able to take care of you without a job. I had two cars and I kept gas in them. I don't know how, but gas was in both of them. I should have wrote it down to write a book because I don't know how it happened. I had five children to feed breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And snacks on the road. Yeah, and we ate. Matter of fact, when we had our first church meeting, the thing that surprised us the most was how big everybody was. Like, Lord, have mercy. What in the world happened to you? Everybody was double their size. Now, he's telling them, don't grow nothing. Don't plant nothing. I'm going to take care of you. But look at 20. Here's us. This is what you do on Sundays. You may ask, what will we eat in the seventh year if we do not plant our own? If I don't go to work, Brother Eddie, how am I eat? God said, I got it, Vaughn. Don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. How am I going to pay these bills, all these bills? I, I got it. What you mean you got it? Put it back up there. Do not plant or harvest our crops. You asking that question. How am I going to make it, Lord? If I pay my tithe, I ain't going to make it. I got to keep this. If I get $5, I ain't going to make it. Now, let me tell you, insulting God is not a good idea. And this is how easily he gets insulted. Jesus said, don't even say to yourself what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear. He said, don't even say that. That insults him. Now, let me, let me show you like this. When I was a little boy, and I would run up to mama and say, what are we going to eat, shoe? Mama say, say something else. I'm going to bat you in your mouth. <laughs> I didn't understand that. I was like, what did I say wrong? All I asked was, what are we going to eat? But she was highly insulted every time I did that. Like, what is wrong with her? Her point is, you mean to tell me that I'm your parent. I, I gave birth to you. I carried you nine months, delivered you, brought you here, provide shelter. You mean to tell me you think I'm not going to make sure? Jesus said, isn't life more than food? And for years I never understood that passage. Because I had to think about that. Wait a minute, you, is it? <laughs> But I had, to, I had to understand that, Brother Powell. Jesus was saying, if I gave you life, so you insulted me now. You mean I went through all the trouble to make sure Reginald Vulnerable is alive and I'm going to let you starve to death? That's an insult. That's a slap in my face. Mm hmm Yeah, yeah. The government put $2,000 in all our accounts. All of us remember that? I had food stamps, Mike. That was the happiest Walmart shopping I ever did in my life. I never was able to say, yeah, get that too. Get them shrimp, yeah. Get some of them crawfish too, babe. Why not? I was, I was, we always had to shop with a list. Like, no, no, put that back. Calculated and all that, right? It was different. It was different. We were eating gumbo and it wasn't even Christmas. Do I have a few witnesses in here know what I'm talking about? Y'all know what I'm talking about? God is able to take care of you. When he, when he talks about the tide, he says, try me. He's not leaving y'all hanging, Rashad. He said, look, try me. On the, 
He don't say that about nothing else. But when it comes to your money, he said, try me. And see if I will not open up a window that you won't have room enough to receive. I was sitting in my house the other day, and I'm looking around my own house, and I say, Lord, have mercy. I'm rich. I'm rich. I'm not just making it. I'm doing good. I go to my closet. I got all kind. I wear the same shoes, y'all. I got, I, but I got like three pair of them up there. Same shoe. And I said, Lord, look at me. I could pick which one I'm gonna wear today. I, all I wear is this shirt, but I got different colors, brother Paul. I say, will I wear purple today or blue or sky blue? I'm rich. I'm rich. Which one of these gray or black pants I'm going to wear today? That's all I wear, gray or black. But I could choose which one. So I start looking at other stuff, Brother Brandon. I look at the crease in it. Now this one look a little prettier than that. You stand in the closet today. But I'm rich. How many of you understand when you look in your refrigerator and you see milk, juice, orange juice, you stand in there letting cold air out like, I'm sick of this orange juice. I ain't getting this kind next time. Got all that pulp in it. We so rich. Trying to get y'all to understand. Trust me, he said. We start mixing the juice, a little orange juice, a little pineapple. This good, honey, you ought to try it. We so rich when people don't have water to drink. They don't have water. We don't even drink water. We don't even drink it. Stand in the shower. Not one kind of soap, all kind of soaps. Mix the soap now. A little strawberry flavor. Running water, just water, just a runner. All day just relax. Rich! TV's in every room. And we have them all burning. Don't miss nothing of the show. Walk in the bedroom, show still going up. Go up the stairs. Don't miss nothing. Some of y'all got it in the bathroom, I heard. Rich. God say, try me. Try me. In all these things, he says, I give you for your enjoyment. That's why I tell you. If you got a good leather chair, wear that bad boy out. God gave it to you for that reason. Find all different kind of positions to lay in it. Get, just try this way. Then turn that way. Wear it out because God got plenty of that junk. Y'all don't even know when to go shopping. Wear the sofa out so you can go shop for some more. Y'all shop with a good sofa at the house. I just don't like the color of it no more. Y'all, your children, mama, y'all don't never even sit on that chair. Shut up, boy. I'm tired of it. I'm just tired of it. We rich. Listen, the truth hurts. If every one of us take inventory of our homes, we don't need to buy another thing. I, I'm mean, just be honest. You, you, you don't need nothing. Not a thing. Listen, I'm a rich pastor. 
Listen to what I'm telling you. I look at, I sit in the study, not my study, the pastor's study. I learned that thing. And I got a library in there. I got every kind of, I done bought the same book twice. I done bought a book, came up, and when the pastor said, oh, Lord, I already had this book. That's how rich I am. We're a rich church. But we fail in trusting God. As rich as we are, we won't give God $20. All we got, we was all just thinking about it. Everybody in here was thinking about it. We won't give God $20. I see some of you take the basket and pass it on. I wonder how you would feel if God took the blessings and just passed you by. For real. Now, what some of y'all need to look at on YouTube is how children live in certain parts of the world. Nikki was telling me today, he went to Southern with an African. And his African friend told him that, man, I'm a prince in my country. And Nikki said, oh, yeah? He said, yeah. He said, but we don't have this. Nikki started looking around like, what? What are you, what are you talking about they don't have? He said, floor. He said, our houses have dirt floors. Nikki said, and you the prince? So what everybody else got if the prince has a dirt floor? Things we take for granted. Nikki looking around trying to find out what he's talking about. What is he pointing at? The man pointing at the carpet on the floor. We walk around in carpet. Right? I'm tired of this cup. <laughs> What's the matter with it? I just don't like the way it look no more. I'm tired of looking at it. Time I walk in the door, this same old carpet. We ought a carpet for nothing. No reason. We have some carpet, Mike, we don't walk on. It's too good for the foot. Don't you walk on my carpet. What in the world? Don't you sit in my chair. Don't you lay in my bed. We take the comforter off the bed. What's the name of the thing? What's the name of it? What's the name of it? We take the comforter off the bed and get the raggedy sheet and sleep with it. I ain't messing up my good comforter. Think about the name of it. <laughs> the comforter becomes more worthy than you. You bought it now, but it's worth more than you. Something's wrong. God said you worship the things I give you instead of worshiping me. My grandmother and them, uh, my grandmother LT, they bought some brand new sofa chair. Nice. I was excited. Ooh. Grandma said, don't I wait. Go ahead. I'm waiting on the plastic man to get here. <laughs> Now, the chairs they had before that felt like plastic. So they went and got some new chairs for comfort. She didn't let us touch them till the plastic man got there. And he put plastic on every piece of the chair. Does that make any sense? Well, they didn't trust God. That's my good stuff. I want that to last forever. It's not going to last. 
okay? Now, as a church, listen, you don't need to be 10,000 deep to do great things for the Lord. Listen, you don't need to be 10,000 deep. Y'all hear what I'm saying? You just need to obey God. If everybody in here was honest with God. Now, all this teaching I'm doing is still up to you and between you and God now. Now, listen to me now. God knows when you're lying. He gave a story about Sapphire. What's their name? Anias and Sapphire sold all their property. It was their property, wasn't it? They sold it. And they said, we're going to bring it and give it to the Lord. Now, they got together before that and said, we're going to tell them. Watch now. Watch when you're holding your envelope up. When I say we're standing before the Lord, that's why I have you hold it up. They said, we're going to tell them this is all of it. So they planned the lie to the preacher. The preacher's sitting up there just doing his job, right? They, everybody bringing their money. They walked up. They went one at a time. You go first, honey. You know how some of us do our income tax? Let's file separately. That's what they did. They filed separately. And they went up there and we're going to tell the same lie. This is all that we have. The husband went up first. Soon as he said it, well, the, well, the preacher say you lied to the Holy Spirit. God spoke in the preacher and say he's lying. Now, y'all don't believe God. Tell me that. See, that's the thing. I know y'all know me as Reginald. I know, I know, but God, tell me when you lying. He used to tell my daddy when I was lying. He say, you're lying. And I declare, I ain't lying. Good thing the spirit is grace. Listen to me now. They lied, and the, the preacher said, you've lied to the Holy Spirit, not to me. And he dropped dead. They drug him out of there. His wife didn't know he dropped dead. If somebody would have told her, goodness, could have told her, girl. But they didn't tell her. And here she come, thinking her husband done got down with it. They got this money on the side. How many of y'all got some money on the side we ain't going to tell the Lord about? How you not going to tell the Lord about it? Walked up there, and she lied. And uh, the preacher said, see those men standing uh, at the back door right there? Oh, yeah, 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 Reb. I see him, Reb. They just carried your husband out of there and buried him. The same men going to do the same thing for you. What you talking about? Boom. She dropped dead. Now, if you're not going to pay your tithe, tell God before you get here. Yeah. Did y'all hear me give you instruction? Don't lie. Tell say, Lord, I'm supposed to give $100. I'm giving you 50 now. I'm keeping the other 50 Now, y'all had that conversation with the Lord. I guarantee you, before you pull in the parking lot, God going to change your mind about that 50 You ain't going to, that 50 going to be doing this in your pocket. <laughs> oh, Lord, I got to get this 50 out of here. Because you can't keep what don't belong to you. Trust him. Trust him. Trust him. He's able. He can feed you. A matter of fact, all of us, even our, stand up, baby. Stand, yeah, stand up. That girl fat. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Now, some of y'all say, I wish I was like that thin. They got people in this world that make her look like she chubby. Y'all ever seen some people starving? Oh, yeah, she'll look chubby. Bring her to certain parts in Africa, they'll be like, where that big girl going? <laughs> starving. Y'all seen them on TV? All the rib cages. Sean, y'all know what I'm talking about? Starving. Most of our tithe money is spent on food. I can't pay my tithes. Cut back on the food. 
right? Cut back on the McDonald's, the fries, right? If you just cut back on food, Brother Paul, you could pay your tithes. We eating up God's money. How many of you not only eating up God's money, but you eat up your bill money? I got to eat. No, you don't need to. You could miss a few. There ain't nothing going to happen. You could fast for a week and still be good. Come on now, I'm just being honest. We don't only eat up God's money, we eat up those people's money. Then we say, I can't make it. I can't pay my bills. So the year of Jubilee now is not about getting over. Go and make all that debt and then want God to pay the bill for you. That's not what it's about. He's talking about people genuinely getting in trouble financially. Look at this. I will send you such a blessing. Somebody say, how you going to do it, Lord? I will send you such a blessing in the sixth year before the year of Jubilee comes. The year I don't want you to do nothing. I will send you such a blessing in the sixth year that the land will yield enough for how much? I'm going to bless you so much. Watch this now. I just want y'all to see it for yourself. While you plant during the eighth year, year of Jubilee over, you're going back to planting again, right? While you plant during the eighth year, you will eat from the what? You're going to have so much food. Old crop and will continue to eat from it until the harvest of the what? You're going to have so much. I'm still eating this gumbo from last Christmas. <laughs> How many of us throw away the Thanksgiving food? Come on now, be honest. You throw it away. I ain't eating another bite of turkey. All right, you got to go. I don't want no more gumbo. I don't want no macaroni and cheese. You got it now. You got it. You just don't want to eat it no more. We set the table at Thanksgiving with way more food than we can consume. Somebody said, I don't know how, um, what's that restaurant where you can eat all you can eat? Golden Corral. Golden Corral. Everybody think they're getting over on Golden Corral. Golden Corral, laugh y'all all the way to the bank. Come on in. Eat all you want. Right? They put that hot bread over there for y'all, right? With all that butter on it. Right? You go get two pieces of that, it's over. They know it. They know it. They got your $15, and you ate about $2 worth of food. That's all you can handle. So God is saying, look, I got it. Put the scripture up. The land, watch now, must not be sold. What? What's the word? Because the land is what? Come on now. Let me help you now. Get this in your mind before you leave here so you can get about your father's business. The land is mine, and you reside in what? Let's see what you are now. As what? And what else? Tell your neighbor, you are kind of strange. All right, strangers. You're a stranger. You don't really belong here. Uh, Imagine with me, this is a line. Y'all with me? I'm going to draw a line. Y'all see the line? Y'all see the line? Y'all see it? Can you imagine? And it goes forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and it never ends. That's eternal life. Y'all got it? I'm going to start all over. You accepted Christ. Now you're on this line. And it goes what? 
forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Seventy years is only but one dot on the line. You focus on that one dot and you got all of this. He said, I come to give you life and give it to you more what? Abundantly. I come to give you real life. You weren't about this dot. Now, how many have ever been broke? Just, that's all right if you've ever been broke. How fast did you forget about being broke when you got money? Did you keep, but I was broke yesterday. You got some money today? Oh, I got plenty of money today, but I was so broke last week. I was so, you don't even remember it. You don't even remember it. That's how you end up broke again, Mike, because you don't remember it. You spend it like it's going to keep coming in, right? You can't. Re- so do you think that what you're going through during 70 years, you're going to remember when you get eternal life? Somebody said, when I get to heaven, I wonder if I'm going to remember. I ain't. If one of y'all come back to me tomorrow, Reginald, remember you was past? Nope. <laughs> don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about this life. This life is not to be compared to what God has given you. So when he tells you to do something on that dot, and he provided you the line, I hope y'all getting this. You can't trust him on the dot of life? And he provided you with the line of life? Which is the greatest? You're trying to do everything you can in that little dot. Don't you know you here today and gone tomorrow? The lady who lived in my house, all I can call her is the lady. I never met her, know nothing about her, don't want to know nothing about her. I just knew a lady owned the house. That's it. I don't really care. Now, somebody one day going to say, the preacher who lived there, all I know is that he was the preacher who lived there. They're not going to know nothing about me. Listen to me. I'm trying to help you with your stuff. They're not going to care about me. Look me up. Want to know my history? They're just going to enjoy that house. Their children will enjoy the swimming pool. They ain't going to think about who was swimming in it before, who dove off the diving board before. They're not going to care. It's just a dot. Now, we got to go. Tell your neighbor it's just a dot. Now, remember, trust God. He got you. He got you. Now, I need y'all to teach that to the rest of the members. Take, keep those cards. Teach it to your family members and teach it to every believer you run in contact with because God's mission needs to be taken care of. Amen?